like 2H pencils, but I have realized that when I sketch with them, you can't always see what I'm sketching. Hey guys, it's yo girl, me, doing things that I do. Hi, so t uh, this week, I everything that I was drawing was coming out garbage. <laughs> And so I wanted to make myself a motivational sign that said, be, well, it says it's trash can, not trash cannot, which is a whole internet meme. Um, I was stuck between that and like, be the garbage can, not the garbage cannot. As you see, I first started with a trash can, then I was thinking the trash can could say the line, and then I got really into the idea of putting Oscar the Grouch on it because... He's a Muppet, and then I tried to learn how to draw Oscar the Crouch. Muppets are hard to draw. Anyway, as you can see, these were some of my initial sketches, trying to learn how. In the end, I kind of worked out two different ways. One of them is to make like a oval and kind of have a smaller mouth, like the one that was just drawn on screen. The other was to make much more circular shapes and kind of almost make it like a, like a half moon with another half moon under it to kind of be the mouth. It's interestingly complex to try and get a Muppet to actually look like a Muppet. In the end, I think I did it pretty well. I was looking at reference photos and some reference art of like people who'd drawn him for kids books before to get kind of an idea of how to make him actually look like Oscar and not just like a random Muppet. Interesting thing about Oscar is he has this big monobrow which actually ends up working as both his eyebrows and his eyelashes and almost like eyeliner. It really frames his eyes. So if you're drawing him yourself, make sure you bring that um, brow all the way around to the sides and make it kind of fluffy on, on the edges, almost like a winged, like, fake lash look. Get it, girl. Anyway. I have to wonder what kind of bodies Muppets have. Like, I mean, are they just kind of sacks? Obviously, you kind of see them when they're not in there, and you see Elmo and Grover's bodies, and they're kind of bipedal, monstery things, but some of the bigger ones, especially with the hands, they're kind of got these sack bodies. Hmm. One of the reasons I don't usually film my penciling process is because I do a lot of redraws, as you guys can probably tell from this. Like a lot of redraws. I think I redrew the hands like seven times maybe? And I'm using a 2H pencil, which is my favorite. Guys, let me know if you like watching the penciling. Because, I mean, if you like it, I can show more of it. But, like I said, I tend not to include all of it because I really, I mean, I guess everyone redraws sections until they're happy with them. But, and maybe I just notice because I recorded it. 
I'll have to watch some other art YouTubers and see how often they redraw things before it gets annoying. Or maybe I just need to cut my videos? I don't know. This is all an ongoing learning process. I've kind of let go of the idea of videos being perfect in order to continue learning, so each video I've learned something about videos. So hopefully you will all be patient with me in my ongoing process of discovery. I feel like that's my pretentious art voice that I use whenever I'm being a pretentious art student. No, like, the trash can represents my inner feelings of garbage and the way that, like, society tells us that we're trash and that we need to buy products which we then throw in the trash. So really, we're just throwing ourselves in the trash and that is why I represent this feeling with a trash can. <laughs> I have a degree in art, and sometimes I tell people I have a degree in being able to bullshit. And I know that's not fair to a lot of artists, but I don't know if other people from art universities- By the way, this is where I make a mistake. Do not use, like, inking pens, because I, I wanted to use the nib, and I was all excited about it, but the ink ended up bleeding, which I ended up using kind of to- and I made it work, but like, don't do it. It might also be because I change the ink in this pen all the time, and it may have previously been purple, but I think black ink often has a purple tone when you water it down. Anyway, I should not have filled lots of areas in with this pen in particular, because it ended up biting me in the ass when I added water to it. <sighs> I really wanted to go find my actual nibs, but I ended up cleaning out part of my art closet when I went to go find them, and I still haven't found them yet. I'm pretty sure they're in this tin box, but I can't find the box! My art cupboard is very big. Anyway, he's looking very grouchy right now. Oh, another thing I kind of tried later, you'll see it way later, is I bought, um, I should do a haul video because I went Black Friday shopping at craft stores. I didn't actually buy a lot for paint. I bought some fabric, but, um, paint-wise, I bought two, what do you call them, water brush pens, like watercolor, they're pens that hold water in them so you can just take the pen and like you squeeze it and the water comes out and you can use watercolors with them. I've seen a lot of people use them. I was interested to try them and I thought they might be on sale. I ended up getting some for seven dollars I think. Um, at Michael's. By the way, here's a pro tip. If you want the water pen things and you go to Michael's, they're, they're in two sections. One of them is over in like the paper art section under the Jane Davenport name. I think she's actually a YouTuber. Um, maybe I should do some research before I talk. But her set costs like $7.99 and you get two. And then if you go to the other side of the store in like the actual art section and you look, it's a set of one and it's like $8.99. So go with the Jane Davenport. Um, if she is a YouTuber, cool. I'm supporting YouTuber products. If she's not, it's still cool because she's doing cool shit. Stuff. Doing cool stuff. Anyway, here we have more of my ongoing journey to learn how to paint. So as you see here, I wasn't aware that not everyone is aware of this, but pill containers that y if you, like me, get all the meds, pill containers are actually waterproof. Uh, if you close them correctly. Um, so they can be really good for holding water. I mean, they're waterproof to keep pills from, or moisture from getting into pills because it will ruin them, duh. But they're also really good for holding water if you have um, the need to take a small amount of water. 
So I like to keep one filled with water on my desk, or my watercolor set, so I don't have to go get water every single time I want a watercolor. This is where I start using purple! I like using purple to shade, and I ended up using it here quite, in my mind, effectively. Um, but it actually really helped because the lines I said earlier that ended up bleeding, they bled purple. So by using the purple highlight, I kind of managed to disguise the fact that some of my lines were like, not happy. Also, I'm clearly painting with really, really terrible lighting. As you can see with the huge, gigantic shadows. But what can you do? Well, you can put more lights on. Clearly that is an option that should have happened. But didn't. I ended up putting a very light purple wash around the corners just to make the piece look a little bit more together. Um, you might see it in the final picture, although I don't think the light levels turned out super great on my final, mostly because I shoved it in Photoshop. It's been really difficult for me to get this video out this week and I really just wanted to get it out. So. Now it's out, and I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, you are a trash can, not a trash cannot. Just like I am a trash can, not a trash cannot. Have a good week, everybody. Bye!